Hey everyone, welcome to my live stream on making a bowl koozie. If you're not live with us now, this will be replaying and feel free to watch it and ask any questions you have. Let's get started. Okay, here is my cutting table. Let's get your comments up here. And feel free to watch it and ask any questions you have. Let's get started. Bear with me here. This is my first live stream ever. There we go. Hello. How are you today, Rachel? All right. Here's some examples. Okay. This one here is one of the very first ones I ever made. It is made out of flannel on the same print on both sides. And on this one, I did the batting, which is this stuff here. I made it the same 10 inches that the fabric is. See how loppy and flat it is? On these new ones that I make now, even this one here also made out of flannel. See the difference? This one, I started making the interfacing smaller. So I cut my interfacing at nine inches and I cut the fabric at 10. So it sits inside of it and then it's not inside of any of the seam allowances. So it just makes it sit and look a lot nicer. Here's one with regular 100% cotton and a flannel inside. Here's a one with flannel and flannel. So, while I do have a bunch of fabric pre-cut, I am going to cut a couple pieces here off of a larger piece to show you guys good ways to do it. So, this one here is the ever-famous Rogu, or Baby Yoda. Big seller. Now, as you can see, this is many, many yards of this fabric. So, since this one goes pretty far what you want to do to keep your print going the correct way is you want to take your salvage end which is the end that's going to have any printing on it your block and which is also going to have slight fray but there is a stopper on there on this side so it doesn't fray any more than it does what you're going to do is take those two corners and fold them together what we're trying to do is get fabric that's a more manageable size for our cutting boards. My cutting board here is an 18 by 24, which is still slightly on the small side, but I'll make it work. that does not do any better. So if yours isn't this big, what you can do is fold it one more time, but you wanna make sure that you keep your salvage edges touching. You don't want them overlapping or anything because then it's not going to be straight. So I'm going to fold this one more time just so it's slightly more manageable. Okay. Next time I'll have to play around with the GoPro so you guys can see more. When you see here your edges aren't perfectly at the top, that happens. Sometimes you don't cut it straight, sometimes the store doesn't cut it straight. Most of the time the store doesn't cut it straight, but that's okay. We'll cut it straight. So you'll take your match salvage edges, and you'll match it up with the fold, pushing everything around so it lies all nice and flat. For these bowl koozies, we're doing a 10 by 10 square. So you want to cut this piece here 10 inches tall. So put that on nice. I have this giant ruler. I've owned it for years. Love it. Couldn't do anything without it. Personally, I think it's a must have, but smaller ones do work. Now, I will be using a rotary cutter, but you can also use scissors. But if you are using scissors, 
You want to make sure that you're using scissors that are specifically only used on fabric. Otherwise, they will dull faster. So, when you line this up so you can get as straight as possible, you want to take one of the folded edges and pick a number on your cutting mat and just line it up with that. Then you bring it down so that way you have the top just a little bit. You can feel with your finger where it's going to need to be cut. If you have fabric weights, you can put them on there. I have this empty or this old bottle of rubbing alcohol filled with water that I use as a weight. So you're going to line up with the top here so this way you're cutting your straight edge. Okay. Make sure it's lined up all the way. Them, but you don't want to release pressure. You don't want to go flat palm because then you have a chance of moving it. You just want to push down with your fingertips. You're going to start slightly off your fabric over here. Then you're going to cut all the way across and keep going past the fabric and then stop. All right, and then we need this piece to be 10 inches. So over here it's at 13. So I'm going to move it down to three. And line it up. Put my weight on the ruler so it doesn't fall. Make sure you got it good and square. All right, and the same thing, you're going to start the rotary cutter off the side. And then you're going to go all the way across to your pass. Make sure you're good before you move the ruler. Because if not, you can just recut it again. All right, now we've got this long piece of fabric here, but we still need 10 inch pieces. So what I do to make sure I get the most out of them is I line up the bottom edge on one of the lines. And then you're gonna cut off the salvage because you don't wanna sew it. It's not gonna look pretty if it shows up in your finished product. I'll move up a little bit so I can see the whole line. Okay. And we're gonna cut it again here. Make sure you keep as square as possible. If you guys have questions or comments, go ahead and write them. I can see them over here on the iPad. So there, you see how I miscut? So I didn't move the ruler. That way I could cut again without causing any other issues. All right, and then we want 10 inch square. So we're gonna line this up to, oh, no, it's not perfectly lined up. Let's try this again. Almost twisted off the table. There we go. Okay, so mine's at 21, so I need to go to 11 to be able to get this square. All right, start off the fabric, cut through the fabric, make sure the fabric's clear, and you can let go of the ruler. So there's one. If you're only doing one, that's great. If you want to keep cutting the rest of that strip, that strip, you can. Put another one here. So you're gonna line up the edge. As you can see, there is some it's a little lopsided, probably from washing. You do want to make sure that you wash all of your fabric prior to cutting it. So, all fabric washed ahead of time. So, trim off the excess. Go down. Cut 10 inches. And there you go. Just a second. If this fabric is 45 inches wide, most fabric is 42 to 45 inches. If you got custom fabric, it'll come in 
whatever size it wants to. It should have enough two more out of this, which I do, so that's good. try to pick good numbers on my mat so I don't have to do much math. 10 inches luckily is a nice one but if it's not going to be nice then pick a different number. So I try to do coordinating fabrics when I do mine. So here's some green for baby Grogu. I have already cut the darts in these ones but that's okay. There's more for me to cut darts in. Groovies. So, you can either do it wrong side, which is the side that the print's going to be backwards on, or you can do it on the right side. And we're going to fold it in half. Okay. And if you're just measuring, this is where you'll measure from. This here is the fold, because this is where folded. You'll measure in one and three quarters on this fold. And then you'll measure up three quarters of an inch, 0.75. So if you're doing it that method, then you'll mark those two ticks here and here and draw your line. Like this. This here is a heat erasable pen. They're great. You won't always get to see it. So if you are using the pen method, you will want to use the wrong side of the fabric so that way you can see it. Make sure your corners are lined up nice. You'll take your ruler and you want on the folded side one and three quarters. And you'll make a little tick. And you want three quarters up. And make a little tick. And you'll take the ruler between those two marks. And you can mark it. You can take your rotary cutter right now and cut it. You can take your scissors and cut on that line. If you downloaded the template that I put in the PDF of the group, it's still in there, so you can feel free to download it. If you're doing that way, which looks like this one. I cut mine on acrylic, but you can also cut it on wood. You cut it out on paper. Any of it works. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half and then you're going to fold it in half again so you have a little square. Doing this you're going to end up with two folded sides. This side here which is going to be a double fold and this side here which is going to be a single fold. If you look on here you'll see this one says fold and this one says fold. You stick that corner right here so both folds are on those lines. We'll hold it in the middle once again with just your fingertips. You're going to take your rotary cutter and you're going to make sure you go backwards in the corner so it gets it all the way forward. Make sure it's clipped. Then rotate it. It's going to shift. It happens. So just realign it up. All right. And then do the same thing in this corner. And then this is a nice, quick, easy way with the template because when you open it, all four are done with just two cuts. So we'll do that on um, both the front and the back. If you guys are doing multiple, you can go ahead and do it on all of them. Feel free to pause. I'm gonna do another one here so you can see it again. So we're gonna fold it in half. And you're gonna fold it in half again. All right, you take your template, the 10 inch one, you take your two fold lines, and you're gonna put that here in the corner of your fold and your fold. Mm -hmm. And you're going to cut this dart. I start on it and I pull back for this one just so I get that corner. Then I pull forwards and turn it, relining up, making sure that your folds are still where it says folds. And then from here and do this. Now, if you want to get fancy, I can upload this where it's edge, like on this one. All right, and then 
we have another one. So I have two Grogu's here, two of his green. Let's go ahead and cut some of the batting. So the first thing you wanna do with the batting is you wanna take your ruler. And you, let me grab another one. Now, when you cut your batting from the yardage, you're gonna do it just how we did the fabric there. And you'll fold it a nine by nine side of the seam allowance. So then you'll take your square of the batting. I'll take a ruler. You can use any pen you want because you're not gonna see it because it'll be in between all the fabric. You wanna go corner to corner with your ruler. Then you just wanna make a line. This here will be the line that we sew on. It'll be the first sewing step that we do. Okay, make sure you can see it. Then you wanna turn it and do it again. We're gonna make X's in the corners. Corner to corner. And that one did not show up. There's something going on with my pen. Mm -hmm. I would not suggest a permanent marker or something along those likes because it will probably transfer to your other fabric over time. But when your pen's working, it'll look like that. Okay? And you need two pieces of fabric and two pieces of batting for every bowl cozy you're making. Okay. You can use the same fabrics like I did on this one, exact same fabric, or you can use coordinating prints. Get it on those. You can use 100% cotton flannel. You can use 100% cotton quilting cotton. You just want to make sure you don't use anything that's polyester because then it will not go into a microwave. It will blow up. Same with this batting. You want the wrap and zap from Pellon because it is microwavable and it won't blow up. I got a whole bolt which was nine yards of this batting. So I already have it cut down into squares, easy for use. Got them in a box hiding behind my sewing machine. I think I posted a video of me cutting all that down in the grape. If not, let me know when I can. There you go, it's working a little bit better. Great thing about these pens is if you mess up, if you have one of these friction heat erase ones, you take it to your iron, blow dryer either one of those you blow it on it for just a second and it completely disappears best pens for sewing in my opinion i've used a whole bunch of pens over my years of sewing these ones are by far the best you can find them at walmart you can find them at target i also have them linked in the amazon list that i posted for all the group for all the supplies you'd need for this so long that's also in the group and in the files all right Time to buy some more you will go but it's worth it so for this next part or you can sew it on, do it both ways, pre-cutting on it. And then in half again, you'll stick this corner that says fold, fold in the fold corner. And now these darts will be itty bitty and this is pretty thick. So if it's too thick for your rotary cutter, that's okay. I'll show you another way you can do it. And then you end up with your itty bitty darts. So if you're like, oh my God, Maggie, that is way too thick for my rotary cutter. It will never do it. I'm afraid. That's fine. So you'll fold it in half. 
Then you'll take this and where it says fold, fold, you'll put the one fold in the middle line, and the other fold on the fold. Hold it still, fingertips. Make sure it's lined up at the bottom. And you'll dart that. And you can flip it. Fold in the middle, fold on the bottom. Make sure it's lined up. Lined up. You want this edge lined up and this edge lined up. And then you can start that. Then what you'll do is you'll open it and you'll fold it the other direction. Make sure your corners are lined up. Fold at the bottom, fold in the middle, line up the bottom and the side. If you want to mark it with your pen, you can mark it now. If you didn't print the template and you're just measuring it, you are looking at one and a quarter in on the fold and half an inch up. This is smaller than the other one because we want this to be inside the seam allowance. Okay, there you go. And then the way I set these up on my desk is I put the main fabric down. This one, I probably want to iron. I probably won't sew this one right now because my iron is not plugged in. So we'll play with this one. So I'm going to put your main fabric. And you want to put right sides down on your board. Then you're going to take the batting you just cut and you want to make sure that your X is facing up. Alright, and then you line up your darts. And if everything's cut properly, you'll see here how they all line up ever so nicely. Alright, now I don't clip it at this point because it tends to just stay together for me. If you do, You'll need pins, but you'll want to put them where you're not have the X's. So you'll want to put a pin here, 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 and here, or any combination of it. But you don't want it to be where the X's are, because otherwise your sewing machine will hit it. So then you're going to do the same thing with the other piece. Okay, so move that to the side. You're going to take this one, you're going to take right side, the bright side of the fabric, see the difference between the two? You're going to put it down on your mat. Take your piece of batting that you cut your notches out of. You're going to line it up with the other notches. If it's not perfect, it is not the end of the world. We can just trim it later and do that. And then what I do is I stack them together. I do stack of these at a time. This here is my blue stack. And so I stack them together so I know what fabric goes with what prints. So let's cut a couple more pieces of the batting so we can see that again. And then I'm going to prep some of these. And then I'm going to sew a couple with you guys so that way you can see the steps multiple times and not have to pause and go back repeatedly. So we're going to fold in half, half again. Make sure fold and fold on the, in the middle. Still adjust your fingertips and slide. This project is a good one to have a trash can nearby. I'm just throwing them on my desk, but that's okay. So there you go. If you guys have any questions feel free to ask them if you're re-watching this go ahead and ask them ability or if you are a little shy or have more detailed questions please feel free to message me i always have my phone with me the phone is always nearby okay. Just a couple more here So, those of you that I don't talk to on a regular basis, there's a couple of you in here. I will be having ankle surgery on August 10th. Tutorial 
for the feed bags for a little bit until I am all better from that surgery. This won't be the last time that I personally sew, but it's getting close. I do run another business with my husband called The Graffiti Bridge. And I will be doing a lot of work with that leading up into my surgery so I can make sure that everyone's custom orders are done before I'm out of commission. If sewing's just not your thing and you're like, there is no way that I would ever do this, but I love these and I want one, please reach out. Do sell them. They are dollars Be glad to show you if you're looking for anything Disney or fun like that, I will refer you to Miss Allison. She is a good friend of mine, lives here locally, does a whole bunch of sewing as well. That's actually how we met. She's in this group as well, so feel free to comment and I will, one of the two of us will show you what kind of fabric we have based off of what you're looking for. If you're wanting a feed bag or something along those likes, please let me know. I do have a bunch sewn right now. I'll gladly show you what I have available to sew and already sewn. Right. Let's see how many I have here. Oh, I need to do one more. So as I'm picking fabric, I just pick fabric that I like and then find coordinating prints and make stacks. I try to do roughly 20 a week. Does it always happen? No. Last week, I think I got seven done, but I also did four bulk or ice cream koozies, which is just like this, except slightly smaller. So once you have mastered this, I can show you guys the measurements for those. It's just a slightly smaller triangle. And then I, after I cut everything, I sort all my fabric by color. So I'm not changing my thread a whole bunch. So this right here is my blue stack that I didn't get finished last week. This is what we're going to be sewing today. So let's take a look. We got piggies. We have puppy dogs. I try to do two of each. That way people, customers on Saturday markets, if they want a set, they can get a set. I have turtles and living on the beach. Those are extremely popular. So we will be selling a set of turtles. I have some cows, which is a fun print. I have Flamingos, which I have not done before. So we'll sew up some flamingos. And then this is a Pinocchio print. We will not be sewing up the Baby Yodas right now because that is a green fabric or, and we'll need green thread. So we'll save those for another time. But just to show you guys how to cut them all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to lay them right sides down and I'm going to put the batting with it right now. So there's the batting. Alright, move that to the side. Do another one. Flamingos. Right sides down. Doesn't matter the direction right now. We just want to make sure it's right sides down so we can line up the batting. Okay, then we're going to stack those two on top of each other. Because then you know when you're sewing that those are the coordinating prints. If you're doing one at a time, even better. Then you know they go together. So this flamingo is a flannel. And the backing is a regular cotton, which is 100% okay. You can do two cottons. You can do two flannels. Any fabric you like that is 100% cotton with no foil, no metallic, nothing like that, will be 100% okay. Then what I like to do 
is I like to alternate one, two, like that. You can see they're at a different angle. So that way I can see how many I have in my stack. So this one's a little bit harder to tell which is which, but if you look closely, you can see here in the blue how dull it is compared to this side. So pay attention to that. You can look at it before you cut the salvage edge off on the side that has the manufacturer's name will be the correct way. Okay. More here. Now on these solids, it honestly doesn't matter. It's exactly the same on both sides. So you'll just lay it down and then put a piece of batting on top of it. All right, I need to cut one more stack of batting. And in half. And half again. Take your nine inch template, put it on the folds. Make sure you got your rotary cutter. If you have this one, this is light, this is locked, this is heavy. Make sure you have it on the heavy. Whatever you will cut. It is a best. And those corners are folded, folded. So thick, I put the split and then pull forward to make sure. Put your rotary cutter to the side so you don't cut your. Take that one. I will be cutting a bunch of these, or sewing a bunch of these. Hopefully that gives you a chance to catch everything. If not, when you watch the replay, feel free to pause and rewind it. Okay, we have our stack. We have one, two, three, four that we're gonna be sewing. So let's head on over to the sewing machine. over to my sewing machine here. So this here is my industrial juki. You do not, let me emphasize, do not need a commercial industrial machine to sew these. It just happens to be the only machine that I have out right now. My little home machine is packed away. Let's take a look here. The angle's not far away. I'm gonna make sure that I have a blue bobbin and a blue thread. And I'm going to re-thread my machine. You want to make sure that your thread is also 100% cotton. This is how the thread industrial juicy machine. This machine here is a DBL 8700. I bought it for bag making and such, but I use it for everything. Uh, star cross love with it when I first got it, but turned out to be my mistake. And she's fixed now, and I love her. Now, the downside to this machine is it is only a single stitch machine, so you can only quite literally do one thing with it. 
I'm reach up under the table, get my bobbin out. When you do this, you want to make sure that you know how your bobbin threads, how it winds, what way it's supposed to go, because all of that will severely mess up your machine if you get it wrong. My bobbin needs to be pulled this way, towards me, and down. So when I wind it and thread it, I have to make so such. And then with this one, it's got a thumb that you pull that up, and then it locks it so it can't fall out. And you shove it back in its hole under me. You can lift it up if you need to, but I can get to the hassle. So the other fun thing about this industrial machine, while it does have a lift here to lift my craft circuit up, it has this guy right down here, right here. You can't see it, that's okay. And when I press that with my leg, it moves the entire thing up and down. So that's always fun. So you won't see my hand when I lift my pressure foot. It's just kind of magic. Now if you have trouble threading your needle, some of the smaller home machines will thread themselves. You can get a needle threader as well. I have a little one that has a light on it. It's a godsend. After you thread your needle, you always want to push it under and away. And then I hold mine because mine has no tension. That loves what I do. Then you're going to go and use your hand turner. Turn it one time. Pick up your bobbin thread. Pull it out. And you want to pull on it and see how mine's not pulling. So I need to pull my bobbin out and redo it. See why it's not pulling. in there um, and then I just take my scissors and I slide underneath to catch that loop and then see that's fun. You do want some tail. I cut it so it's not too crazy long. Now when you're doing this the first stitch we're gonna do is essentially going to be a top stitch. What we're going to do is we're gonna sew from here to here and here stitches on this side of the fabric. So when you're going to see a stitch on the outside of the fabric, it's called a top stitch. You want to use a slightly bigger stitch. So on this one, you want to turn your stitch. It should be right here and it'll be little buttons for your stitch length. On mine, I have this knob here that I'll be turning to the number four. I have a Teflon foot on, but any regular foot that you have for this will work just fine. And what you're gonna do is stick it in there. For mine, it does not hold tension on my thread. So I have to hold my finger here to hold tension on my thread. Otherwise it'll knot up on the back side. So you wanna line up the hole in your foot and on your needle with the line that you drew to the best you can. All right, you're gonna put your foot down. I'm gonna hand crank mine two three turns and you can see the needle moving then i release my tail it's called red tail and i'm going to sew this is a little loud sorry ahead of time go at your own speed sometimes this thing goes fast because it's crazy and you're going to sew all the way off this edge all right after you take a couple stitches you do want a back stitch it could be a reverse button here. It'll look like a U-turn arrow. I have this thing right here. That's my reverse. What that does is it locks your stitches in place. All right, so after you do that, you'll go to the end. When you get to the end, oh, what are you doing, Michelle? Sound. So 
I was going to show you how I wind it up. And is always going to happen if I ever did a live stream. He's going to act a fool. So bear with me here. I'll pull these threads out. Machines are finicky. They're not exactly the need them, so do not fret. Everything on this machine I do know how to fix myself. <laughs> so it is not the complete end of the world. all of these threads but this is a great time to tell you guys once you're finished no one's gonna know this ever happened so seam ripper my brand new big one walked off i'm not sure where it went i'm gonna pull that up to the back just some cutting threads on the inside so the outside what you're gonna do is you're just gonna so let's take this bobbin back out. And so that's good. And we put it in. And for this purpose, I'll let this So on mine, my bobbin goes in right here. So I'm gonna pull that up. It's okay. This just shows you that everyone has problems with the machine. It doesn't matter how long it is and so on. So we can and we'll lock up whenever they want to. Here's my So with mine. Don't push it through your whole thing and go. Slide your thread through your circle. And then pull it through. Ta -da. Okay, let's try this again. Sure we're gonna put it just a little bit farther, higher than it, where it stopped. So we're gonna go here, even though it stopped stitching here, we're gonna re-stitch over this, and then we're gonna go forwards a couple. That's where we were. Go back to lock in those threads, and then go to the end. Once we get to the end, we're going to back stitch again a couple. I like to do four or five. You don't have to do that many. I just like now here and I just move it a little bit so I can see this hole because my machine doesn't keep tension so unless I want to sit there and hold everything every time now I do still keep my hand on it out of paranoia a couple stitches forwards, reverse, so I go forwards again. when I get to about here anytime you stop the machine you always want to make sure that you put your needle into the fabric to save your position and so you don't skip, skip a stitch. Then I cut my tail and then I'm going to finish sewing this just like I did the other Now, if you're only sewing these two, you'll take this one again. And then I'm going to snip these ones in the middle so they don't get caught. And then you're going to go. 
You're going to do the same thing again on the opposite side. So that way you have your X sewn. If your machine holds tension, perfect. Forward sew, make sure you always backstitch anytime you're sewing. Otherwise, your stitches will move. When you stop your machine, some of those nicer ones will automatically put the needle down. Mine does not. Mine has no bells and whistles, so I have to do it all. So always make sure you turn it so your needle is in your fabric. Otherwise, when you go to shift it, the whole thing will move and you'll have to skip stitches. That's just not pretty. So two of these with you guys, so that way this video is not a million hours long. You can flip it over, look at your stitches. So pretty. See, can't even see where it messed up. Okay. Now when you're sewing these and you're sewing one at a time, great, more power to you. If you love them, you want to sell them or make them as gifts, and you want to batch sew as I call. And what I would do is I would sew all the diagonals on every piece I'm sewing and then go back through and sew every other diagonal instead of just completing one at a time. So if I was doing all 10 of those that I showed you earlier, I would sew all 10 in one diagonal and sew all 10 in the other diagonal. These do make wonderful gifts. Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation, Christmas stocking stuffers. Everyone needs both of trust me. So when I get to the last one, since I'm doing these four, I'm gonna pull it a little bit, make sure I have a tail, and then trim it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through all of them. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna trim off my threads. Here, when you go to the front side, you want to make sure you hold the thread taut and clip as close to the bottom as you can so that way there's no loose threads anywhere. If you have loose threads like these here, you can cut those as well. All right, so do that for all the pieces you're sewing on. The good and bad thing of this industrial machine is this table that the machine is physically mounted to. It's great and dandy, but sometimes I miss being able to remove the table from my machine and have a small little arm I can sew in. Okay. This one. As close as you can on the side that you'll see. have any questions now or while you're re-watching this please feel free to comment them once you have all of that right here is the seam allowance so if you see this here has a max seam allowance you just run the fabric right here and it keeps a nice seam allowance if you do not most plates here have measurements on them you can use 
sewing straight. You can use painter's tape is another good one so you know where to go. I will just be using my cheater foot. So this one you want to do quarter inch. But now we're going to be sewing the first stitch. So we're going to switch our stitch to three and a half. Okay, so we want a three and a half stitch on this part. Next we're going to take our right sides up. Oops, I didn't sew the other side of this one. That's what I was afraid of. Always flip your project over and make sure that you get all your stitches in it. All of us make mistakes. Okay, quick fix. If you do forget to do it, you can do it at the end. I did do that on some Christmas presents last year. It is not nearly as fun, but it is doable. So, you want right sides up, pushing it at three and a half. You're going to fold it in half, lining up this dart, those edges, and this dart here. What we're going to do now is we're going to sew the dart at a quarter inch seam allowance. So, just like before, you're going to Put your needle down, set your fabric up against it. You're going to do a couple little stitches. When you do this, you want to make sure that your batting is underneath your presser foot. Then go forwards, always go backwards. Now when you get to the end here, you want to make sure that you go all the way off and then back on this fabric to make sure you get this dark point here. Now, if you want to do each piece individually, cut your strands, your threads, and then sew the others. I'm going to production sew this for you and show you a couple more times. So, needle down, press your foot up, but press your fabric up against the needle, a couple stitches manually. And you're going to go back and forth there, make sure you catch the back in, go all the way to the edge, and back off. And it looks like that. Alright, I'm going to do that a couple more times here for you. If you are only sewing the two, you're going to flip it and do it on this side now. So it's going to be the exact same thing. And a couple of stitches. Do you not sew this fast? That is 100% okay. That's why I'm making a couple of these for you guys to see. Fold it in half. Line up your dart. Keep it down. Now that needle is brutal. You want to make sure you keep it back because it will go straight through your nail or whatever you stick in there without any discrimination. So you sewed this one. Now I'll flip it. Line up this dart now. I stick my finger in here to make sure that there's no crease or a bubble. Line it up. I'm going to do the same thing again. Remember, always go in reverse the beginning and end of every So once you have the two, get your work. Look how pretty. Then you're going to fold it this way. Okay. And so a couple more of these other ones for you. Finger in, get your wrinkle out. Line up your dart. And so, remembering the back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, 
we work that corner. And then that. Open it. It should be the exact same thing. It's going to be a little puffy, so I like to just push that in so it lies flat. It's still packed because I have this industrial one that can't really be packed up, so I just just been using it for the last year. I might have to find all the pieces in boxes still, depending on how the surgery goes. And definitely sew on my smaller home machine with my left foot. Not so much with this one, I've been practicing, but it's very different for sure. Okay, I'm going to open it and press it this way. Lining up your darts, making sure you press in this dart so it lies flat. Don't worry so much if your edges don't match right now. Just make sure that your dart matches. So you see how this one, the batting doesn't line up quite so well? That's okay. No. one's gonna know. I'm just gonna take our scissors after you line up the dart and just snip. Now it's perfectly aligned. So after you get all that one side's done, you're going to flip it, push it out so it lies flat, line up this corner, pull over that last dart again. Oops, my bridge is sitting right here. And pull this again. That is problems that I have with this big machine. It will sew with the cotton thread. It doesn't necessarily like the cotton thread. It goes for thicker thread with the wax and the polyester and all that fun stuff, but it will sew with the cotton. I just have to do it slightly slowly. Okay, so we line up our dart. Put tension on our thread. Since this one snapped, it's about line again. I just like to pull some thread to make sure there's not a weak spot in the thread. Sorry about having to postpone this tutorial. Last week, our internet went out and so did our air conditioning. So there was not a bunch getting done in my house. Okay, so we're just going to re-sew right on top of them. Now, if you're sewing leather, plastic, or something, you can't do this because it's cotton. That's better. This one, this. Once again, it's not lined up perfectly. That's okay. I'm just going to take this and do a chop. Stitch and stitch and 
she did all of the darts. We need to go through and clip all of our threads. Clip that one. We're just gonna clip them off at the edge. Now you're gonna flip it. Like this one. If you didn't sew them all together in a line, you'll be clipping the other sides too. I only have thread on the one side since I clip it as I sew it those ones. I do have a trash can over here next to me. I'm not just throwing all this in the garden. Alright, this next part you're going to need your clips. Alright, clip, clip, clip. Snip, snip. And any extra thread that you, fabric pieces or anything like that, clip it because otherwise it will be in your way. Alright, for this next part, you're going to move your clips. Okay, you're going to open all of your pieces. I tend to turn the outside fabric, the good one, right sides out. Push out my corners. When you push out a corner, you're just going to take your finger in the corner of the dart and push it out. Okay. And then you're going to take one of your other fabrics, the good fabric, right side together. So you're going to take the fabric that has your fancy fabric on it, fancy print, and push out your corners. So on this side, your pointer on this side, and you're just going to push. You want to do that on all of your darts. Okay. Then you're going to take your lining piece. You're going to have it wrong side out, right side showing. You're going to take the wrong side of your fabric, and you're going to stick it inside of it. Now when you do this, you want to start lining up point to point, and clip to clip down here, and then you will pinch them in the middle. I only put one clip, but please feel free to put as many as you want. You're going to go to this side, make sure points are touching, and points are touching. I'm going to add a clip, and you're going to do that all the way around on all the ones that you're sewing, okay? Point to point, and see how this one's not lining up? Just push it. And push it down in it. It'll work out in the end. Okay. I can make the clip. Point to point. And you're going to clip. Point to point. And clip. you guys are done sewing these, please, please, please post pictures in the group. I can't wait to see them all. Point, point, click, and then the last one. Point to point, and click. All right, I'm going to do it again on this one. You're going to line up points at the top here. And you're going to make sure it's lined up here where it goes down. Pick up. And then do it again on this side. And go all the way around. If it looks funny like this, it's fine, I promise. Just stick your fingers inside of it and push it down until the points line up. If you want to use the same fabric on both sides, you can do that as well.
There's a couple different ways you can sew it. You can sew it like this and have it folding in on you. Or you can sew it like this and then you just sew along here to see and it lies flat then. So when you do this, you're going to start on one of the edges on this side of the dart. Okay. You're going to sew here and you're going to sew all the way around. And you're going to stop at this clip. This is going to be your turn. You do birthing hole or turning hole in sewing. So you want to leave this open. So between clip to clip, you want to leave this open here. Okay. So this also is going to be a quarter inch seam allowance. So you're going to sew at a quarter of an inch from this edge. Start a couple stitches. A little bit and then you're going to reverse a little bit. Now when you get to the edge here, you want to stop roughly a quarter of an inch away. So the way you do that is make sure your needle's down in your fabric. And you're going to lift your presser foot and you're going to turn. If you line up on that quarter of an inch, you're good. If it's not, go back and then you can just manually turn it one or two clicks. Okay, so mine's roughly a quarter of an inch, so we're going to go. And then you're going to keep going. As you get to a clip, just remove it. If you have an issue like that, that's just a thread stuff. That's why we clip those. Make sure your needle's always in before you lift your presser foot. Go like this. Hi, Monica. Get to the edge. Make sure your presser foot's down and your needle's in the fabric. You're going to lift the presser foot and turn. So you see how this one's not quite a quarter of an inch? I'm going to go back. Because with my pressure, with my needle down, I can just turn this thing all day. I'm going to manually crank it one stitch and then come back. And now it's a nice quarter of an inch. So you're going to sew, moving clips as you go. Now go corner, making sure my fabric lines up. Get to the edge. We're going to lift it. Not quite a quarter of an inch. I do see that my fabric. It is a little bit, it's not lined up perfectly, so we're going to turn it, we're going to keep going, and get back to that nice quarter of an inch, there we go, and just keep going. Now we're getting up to the edge where we're going to be stopping, okay, so we want to turn it, quarter of an inch again, now we only want to sew to here, we don't want to sew this close because then we can't turn it. Monica, I promise it is not that hard. Watch this tutorial and you can always call me. So we get to the end, we're gonna back stitch and we're gonna lift it out and we're gonna clip our threads. For these, you just wanna go ahead and stick your scissors up against the fabric, not cut through the fabric and cut nice and close there. Okay, while we're here, we're also going to cut the threads on the other side. Alright, now we want to make sure we do this. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to check our stitches and make sure that we caught the fabric. So we're going to look on both sides, make sure that we caught the corners. And cut the middle. Now we're going to turn it over because no one cuts perfectly. And you're going to check. Make sure that you cut your corner there. You cut this here. That there's nothing missing. Nope. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, there was one. Alright. We're going to start on this side of one of the darts. It doesn't matter which one. Any dart. Okay. I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And just a couple start stitches. Then remember to always go backwards and forwards. Get to a corner. Then make sure your needle's all the way down. You're going to turn. Okay, I need to go a little bit more. Okay. 
turn it. Remember, needle in the thread in the fabric so you can turn it. And we're gonna just keep going around the side here. And around the side here to the next corner. You're gonna get quarter inch away, make sure your needle's down. And you're gonna turn it. Keep going. to the edge here, needle in fabric, and turn it again. If you need to go slower, go slower by all means. Sew at your pace. Don't sew at someone else's. That's just going to frustrate you. Like anything else in life, do not compare yourself to others. I have been sewing for... Uh, 10 years selling, been selling since 2007 or so actively. So, we're on the edge here. You want to make sure you leave this hole here so you can turn it. So you're going to sew to this and then you're going to back up and then you're going to cut your threads. Mm -hmm. So there, back, always back. Funny again, so we're just gonna put all these threads, and then I will re-thread my needle. No, I do not know why it does it. Yes, it is very aggravating. One day, maybe I'll figure it out. Others looking his tree. And we're going to check out what the machine did here. Extra thread there, extra thread here. And we're just going to flip it. Flip, flip. Flip. And flip. Alright. Fourth. Right here a little bit where my machine works back. Oops. Stay with me. There we go. I'm going to trim this thread. This thread is the hole. Alright, and then we're going to do like before and check all of our corners. Looks here. I think that's not enough, so I probably will go and re-sew that one. And we'll re-sew that one. I'm going to so I'm just going to start at the corner and go corner to corner and just re-stitch this one a little bit deeper in right here so it catches the line. Just catch the line. This won't affect anything. Just reinforcing it. It'll still be in the same amount. There we go. Alright, now that we've checked it all and it all looks good, we're going to flip it to, luckily in this case we have the lighter side, but you don't always, and that's okay too. I'm going to grab scissors. You can, what we're going to do, this is called clipping the corners. So you see where you corner stitched in this. What we want to do is cut straight, but we don't want to cut through it. We don't want to cut against it. We want to cut a little bit away. And what this does is it gets rid of the bulk in your seam allowance, which will give you the nice pointy corners when we poke it through. Now you don't want to get too close. And you don't want to be necessarily too far away. It's a happy little medium between the two. We're gonna cut straight across, just like that, in all four corners. And this is why our opening is in the middle and not in a corner. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to turn it right side in. So you're going to find your opening. You stick your hand in. Now your whole hand won't fit, but I stick, you know, what can you? So you see your finger here, and you're going to take your other hand, and you're going to 
push it into the claw. And you're gonna grab it and just kind of like this, pull it through. Just like that, okay? So find the opening. You're gonna stick like a claw in. Your whole hand's not gonna fit. You're gonna scrunch it up. You'll take right here this seam. You're gonna push it into your hand and you're gonna pull. And while you're pulling this, you're pushing this way to get it all through. Now you're gonna stick your finger and your thumb. You're gonna find this corner. You're gonna stick your thumb in, you're gonna stick your pointer in, and you're gonna poke it out with your pointer. And you're gonna fish around and do that to all four corners. Thumb in, pointer. Thumb in, pointer. All right. I'll do that on this one. Put your thumb in there, you push it out with your pointer. Push out with your pointer. Push out. Push out. Now, if those look good to you, fine, dandy. Personally, I like to poke them out a little bit more. This is a knitting needle. You can also use a thing called a thingamajigger or a crochet hook. Do not, do not, do not use your scissors. You will just cut a hole in it. So inside here, I like the knitting needles because it's nice and long. You're going to sit here. On the outside, you're going to hold it here just below the knitting needle, and you're just going to gently poke with the knitting needle. Okay? And you're going to go here and just gently poke out with the knitting needle. If you have threads sticking out or that's just pieces of the fabric, just cut it, rip it. All right? So you're going to do that on all four corners. You're going to stick fingers right with the knitting needle. Do that on this one. Pinch the two apart so you're not getting into the batting. You're getting into where you sewed. I'm just going to poke it out. Poke it out. Poke it out. And poke it out. Perfect. Now what I like to do is I like to put the lining side down. You're just going to pull those little corner right off. Alright, and now I like to make it all nice and pretty. Okay, so take your hand like this, poke out your darts, make it all nice and pretty. Now you'll need a handful of clips. And what you're going to do is take your opening and you're going to stick your fingers in it like this and you're going to pinch it. And see how it closes on its own there? Perfect. So you're going to take a clip and you're going to clip it shut. You're going to take a clip, you're going to clip it shut. And you're going to do that without the whole opening. Now you might be wondering how we close this. What we're going to do is called a top stitch. So we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on the edge, just like this. And it is enough to make this sit flat and to catch this and close it. So right here, I feel a little bit of the batting rolled, so I'm just going to roll it with my finger. Make sure it's all nice and flat. All right, now I'm going to do it again on this one. Take your fingers inside the hole and roll it. Hide the raw edges and you're going to pull. See how it gets rid of that fucker? Perfect. I'm going to take the clips and I'm going to clip it. And clip it. Use as many clips as you like here. There's no right or wrong answer. Alright, and after this, we're going to go back to sewing at a quarter of an inch. And you want to switch it back to a number four. Because, or, I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch. And you want it on a stitch like the number four. Because this is a top stitch, so it'll be our final stitch, and we want it nice and pretty. Now, when you sew these, you don't want to start right where the opening is, because that'll make it real hard. So, I like to do, so here's the opening. I'm going to start right here. Now, for this, you want to start, here's your dart. You want to start on this side of your dart. Otherwise, your machine will get stuck in your dart when you go to finish it. Okay, so you're going to start right here. Here's the dart. You're going to start right here. And one side opposite 
of where your opening is. Okay, eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you want number four stitch line. So two threads, a couple starter stitches. Even though this is a top stitch, we are still going to back stitch because it does lock our stitches in place, all right? Then you see here how I'm just pushing it down right here. I'm gonna roll that blue under a little bit. Down, oh, remember, needle down when corner, and just like before, you're gonna turn it, needle down, and an eighth of an inch, stick, eighth of an inch seam allowance. Right. Now, as we get to the first clip, stick your finger here to keep it from moving too much, and slowly go across, and just like there, hold your finger. Now remember, don't get your finger in the sewing machine because that will definitely hurt. Right. In all my years of sewing, I actually have never done that. Let's not bad. Rolled a little bit, so I'm gonna roll it flat before I stitch it. Now with this technique, you also should be catching just a hairline of that batting, but it's not in your seam allowance, so it gives you nice flat corners. A set of bulky corners and then right here the blue is showing when I just hold it down so I'm just gonna roll that blue a little bit now before I get back here I want to make sure that I clip my stitches here on threads so that way I get a nice close stitch when I finish it so I'm gonna take it here and I'm just gonna roll it like this between my fingers to flatten that out again and make sure the blue is underneath Okay, we're gonna go down this way. Almost done. Get to the corner. We're gonna turn. Then we're gonna get to this last bit. Remember, right here, you want to go back again a couple, and then you are done. You clip your threads here. Now make sure you get it nice and close to the fabric. And there you go. You have successfully sewn a bowl koozie. Congratulations. Ta -da. And it is reversible. So you can flip it this way. Stick your bowl in. Alright, I'm going to show you that top stitching one more time here. So here's where the opening is. So we're going to go here, this side of the dart. I'm going to sew right there. My glue is rolled underneath. Move your needle all the way in the thread, in the fabric, you're going to turn it. Alright, now remember you want to let your clip get to it. Mine's a little wonky here, so I'm going to pull it back under. 